So this sustainably harvested beauty is called Murado, and it's not a wood that's for everybody. We just gotta get that part out right away. Stick with me for a minute and maybe I'll expose you to something new. Hey, Woodworkers of YouTube, great to see you again. My name is Mark, I'm from Woodworker Source. So please allow me to introduce you another beautiful wood that you probably don't know about, or maybe you do, I don't know, we'll see. If I do nothing else around here, at least I wanna know that I've done my part to broaden your woodworking horizons by exposing you to some pretty cool woods. By appearance alone, Murado is a dead ringer for certain rosewoods, and that should tell you about the level of beauty that we're dealing with here. It's loaded with a lively display of dark colors from light-bodied red wine to kisses of reddish purple churning with tan and copper color all the way to stuff that's just shy of black. It's super cool. So in any given board, you can get any mix of it all. So this wood is a little rambunctious, which is one reason why it might not be for everybody. However, that's why some sources just give in to this wood's allure and give it a more dazzling name like Powell Farrow, Jacaranda, Santos Rosewood, Bolivian Rosewood. And speaking of Bolivia, that's actually where a lot of this wood comes from. So the tree is naturally pretty short and pretty small. And unfortunately that means that the boards that come out of it are pretty narrow and pretty short. Usually nothing wider than five inches, anything wider than that's pretty rare. And then three to five foot lengths is pretty much the norm. Not much longer than like five feet, six feet at the, at the most. So what should you use this wood for? Well, frankly, its place is obviously in super highly decorative woodwork and small accent pieces. But Murado does get used for really big situations like flooring and even grand piano bodies. So with that said, it's hard, it's dense, yep, but it is super fun to work with because it just comes to life with just a basic clear finish. So I made this tray and plate set out of Murado and hard maple and all I did was sand it to 220 grit and apply this finish called walrus oil and wood wax, and that is it. Because the wood is so hard and dense, man, this stuff cuts so crisp and so smooth. It's great to work with in that regard. And sanding it smooth really doesn't require any more effort than your usual favorites like walnut or cherry. It just works really nice that way. And a couple quick tips on how to get a really nice, gorgeous finish on this wood. Since you gotta watch out for a couple of things. First of all is with oil finishes. If you want to use an oil-based finish, I really suggest that you put down your first coat really, really lightly and let that dry really well for at least 24, 48 hours if you can. That first coat will tell you if you're going to have further problems. There's some natural oils in this wood that can conflict with other oil-based finishes. If you just want to avoid that altogether, go get de-waxed shellac. It's super clear, super nice to use, and that puts down a nice barrier coat, and then you can put any type of top coat on top of that. I've used de-wax shellac in a lot of previous videos on a lot of different types of finishes. You can probably search our archives and find all kinds of tips on using that, but it's a, it's a piece of cake. You can actually find that stuff at hardware stores and big box stores too. But to be frank, I've used tongue oil and I've used boiled linseed oil on this wood and I just did the first coat super light, super diluted in a very, very light coat. Wipe it on, wipe it off, and just let it alone for about 24 hours. I haven't had any problems with that kind of a finish taking as long as that first coat was really light. In this case of the tray and these two plates, I hit this with this stuff called walrus oil, which is a combination of some plant-based oils. They're food safe. And then I top coat it with wood wax. And for this type of project, that was perfectly appropriate because this is gonna come in contact with food, some water, all I'll need to do is just clean them off and re-wax them from time to time and they're ready to go. But on a tray and some plates or whatever's gonna serve some food, you just can't beat the simplicity of a nice cutting board oil and some wax to top it off. It's a great way to do it. There you have it guys. Thanks for watching. My name is Mark. I'm from Woodworker Source. We are just a hardwood lumber supplier. We supply woods like this to people like you. We even deliver it right to your door. So go check out our website for super simple, easy online ordering. Subscribe to our channel if you want to check out more content like this. Give us a thumbs up. All that jazz. Would really appreciate it. See you next time. Thanks.